Now another cool feature, privilege capture. And with privilege capture, it's quite interesting because a lot of customers I talk to, I work with, have gone the track of least privileges. And when you have a packaged application, it's often very hard. You are bound to the application instruction and it requires to create some users or the application install script create some users in the database. And maybe some of the privileges the user gets are not really needed. And this is where privilege capture comes in. What we see very often is grant DBA to the user and with admin option. This is fantastic. And you may have heard or seen this already, somebody calling you and say, oh, I, I do this, I develop something here and um, ah, just give me DBA privileges. And of course, say, so, oh, cool. Grant DBA to app user and best thing with admin option. Yeah, no. I, I'm pretty certain you don't do that or you have a hard time doing this. Um, let's see what privilege capture can add here. So the idea is we implement the concept of least privileges. We report used privileges and grant paths and we report unused privileges. That is the idea of the privilege capture. And the very important thing, and this is why we decided that we want to include this in our slides here. Somebody made a not so wise decision in the early days and said, oh, this requires the data vault option. Now the data vault option is not an option everybody has. So not many people use that. And with 18C, this became a standard enterprise edition option and not just from 18C on, it applied backwards to 12201 as well. So from 12201, and this is why I have the screenshots from license guides here for different releases on the slide, you see in 121, it's still requiring data vault option and from 12201 on, it's not there anymore. So if you have enterprise edition, feel free to use that. And when we, do this, the package dealing with privilege capture is DBMS privilege capture, very obvious. And it has some very important subroutines. And the first step is that we create a capture. So in this case here, I would like to find out uh, about the tuning privileges. So I do a DBMS privilege capture, I create a capture and for a specific user. So let's assume the user Smith here, that is my application user, and I would like to evaluate the privileges in regards to tuning here. When I have the cre capture created, I need to enable it to be in place. So enable the capture, and now it starts recording. And you run this for a period of time. This doesn't have to be like only 30 minutes. It could be days or weeks if necessary. At one point, when you disable a capture, then we stop the recording of the privileges the user Smith used here. And then we need to generate the results. So very simple, generate result, tuning proofs. That was my capture policy I created. And what information do I get here? I generate the results. And when I generate the results, some views in the database get populated. So there's a long list of views actually. I just pick two examples here. If you are interested, uh, I didn't see a reason to put all of them on a slide because the documentation link I had on the first slide here lists all of them, but the DBA used sysprivilege path. So this tells me now that the user Smith here had analyzed any and got it through the impful database role. So you see the exact path, how the user got to that privilege and he used it, okay. Even more important, and I figure out this is the information you typically are looking for, are the unused privileges. What does Smith has and really doesn't need it? 
So here we found out, oh, Smith had administer any SQL tuning set because I went under tuning privileges. Uh, database trigger resource manager, administer SQL tuning sets, all the any assembly, whatever that is, on commit refresh. So all these privileges were granted implicitly to that application user, but none of them was used. That's cool. Let's revoke them right away, right? Yeah, be careful. So first of all, if I want to start another run, I delete this one so I can start the same run again, or I drop the capture. And this, the drop is actually not longer needed. Um, anyways, whatever you do, it wipes out the information from the views. So basically the views get only populated when you start a capture and enable it. Once you disable it, you find the information and then you can generate the reports. And once you drop or delete the run, then the views will be wiped and you're ready for the next run. In order to do that, you need the capture admin role. And in multi-tent, an analysis needs to be run on each container. So if you have 689 PDBs and you have the user Smith in all of them, you need to check of course, in all these PDBs. Only one capture policy can be active at a given time. I think this is a bit of a downside, but uh, it, it's like how the feature is created because uh, there's only the structure underneath and the views get populated and then wiped out again. So only one policy capture can be active at a given time. And it sounds great. And I told you, let's remove them. Be careful. Be really careful because it may be that your capture period was too short. It could be that, let's say, the end of the month calculations, the asset report run also with the Smith user needs exactly one of the privileges you revoked. So be a bit careful, check the privileges before you revoke them, and keep note on what you revoked. Just in case somebody calls you a few weeks later and says, oh my God, Smith can't do this report anymore. What's wrong here? We get these strange errors. Then you can figure out and say, oh, I secretly give them better back. No, but honestly, just be careful with that. It just could be that you missed something. And as I said, the results are kept until the capture on a policy gets deleted. A very cool feature, Enterprise Edition feature, I worked with customers using that. I think it's extremely helpful. So give it a trial. It's Enterprise Edition standard. And yeah, let's go on with the next feature from here.